Hi, in this video, we want to take a look at one-way ANOVA. ANOVA stands for Analysis of Variance. Now, what is ANOVA for? Well, what I'm going to talk about first is the t-test. So remember that when we do a t-test, we're checking to see if two different subpopulations have different averages for the same data field. Okay, and so I have two different groups, and I want to see, do they have the same average when I look at some other numeric variable? Well, with ANOVA, what I'm doing is I have more than two groups. With one-way ANOVA, I've got maybe two or three or four or five, any finite number of groups, and I want to check to see, is there a difference among them, or do they all, from a statistics point of view, look like they have the same overall population average of that other variable of interest. All right, so what analysis of variance will tell us is there is a difference somewhere between these different subgroups. It won't tell us where those subgroups are. We have to go in deeper and start using box plots, t-tests, you know, you know um, summary statistics, things like that to figure out where is the difference. But a one-way ANOVA tells us there is a difference somewhere, go find it. All right, so let's get into it. Analysis of variance, often referred to as ANOVA, is a statistical method used to analyze the difference among groups in group means in a sample. The one way ANOVA specifically is used when there is one independent variable and one dependent variable. So the independent variable is gonna be a categorical or ordinal variable and the dependent variable is going to be numeric. The one way refers to the number of independent variables in the analysis. So we just have one variable that's categorical, which in this case is just one. The dependent variable is typically continuous, so it's an interval or ratio, while the independent variable is categorical, nominal or ordinal. The main goal of one-way ANOVA is to test if there is a significant difference among the groups of means. So one or more differences somewhere within all those different groups. This is done by comparing the between group variability to the within group variability. If the variability of the group means between groups is significantly greater than the variability within each group, then it is inferred that there is a statistically significant difference among the groups. Right, and we'll talk about the different types of variability in a moment. The null hypothesis in a one-way ANOVA is that all groups have the same mean, okay? While the alternative hypothesis is that at least one group is different from another. If the resulting p-value from the ANOVA test is less than the chosen significance level, typically 0.05, then the null hypothesis is rejected in favor of the alternative hypothesis. In summary, a one-way ANOVA provides a statistical test of whether the population means of several groups are all equal, and therefore, it generalizes the t-test to more than two groups. ANOVA is a key tool for researchers looking to compare the means of three or more groups and determine if differences exist among them. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the actual hypotheses that we're running when we do our hypothesis tests. So in a one-way ANOVA, the null hypothesis states that all group means are equal. All right, so here you can see that I have all the means, population means are equal to each other and we have K groups. Well, the alternative hypothesis is that this group of equal signs is not true. So there is at least one different average from another different average. So at least one, somewhere in here, we have an inequality instead of an equal sign, and that is our alternative hypothesis. This one's kind of worded weirdly because of like the mathematical logic of it, but at least one population as a different average than another population average. And so mu sub i, here it didn't print out correctly, but mu sub i is just the, the uh, subgroup average. 
and k is the total number of subgroups that we're looking at. All right, so now, if I only have two groups, I could use a t-test, or I could use one-way ANOVA. Both a two-sample t-test and a one-way ANOVA are statistical methods used to determine whether there are significant differences between the means of different groups. However, they differ in terms of the number of groups that they can compare. A two-sample t-test, this is a parametric test used to determine whether there is a significant difference between the means of two groups. The null hypothesis for a two-sample t-test is that the means of the two groups are equal. It is useful when comparing exactly two groups and the output is a t uh, statistic and a p-value. For one-way ANOVA, this is used to compare the means of three or more groups. The null hypothesis for a one-way ANOVA is that the means of all groups are equal. It, is es it essentially generalizes the two-sample t-test to more than two groups. The output of an F statistic is a p-value. All right, so my opinion is that if I only have two groups, I will want to use a t-test because that um, is we have control over pooled or unpooled variants. And if there was a direction aspect, uh, the t-test will detect which one's larger, which one's uh, greater. One way ANOVA, the advantage of this when I have just two groups is that this is consistent with other ones. So if I'm doing a lot of ANOVA, if I'm doing a lot of a lot of tests for different groups, in let's say I've got you know a whole bunch of them that I have to do, and I've got for one particular one, one I have only two groups, while on the L, the other ANOVA tests I'm running, there's multiple groups, more than two, then it would be nice to be consistent with the rest. So if I'm only running one test and it happens to have two groups, I'm going to be using two sample t-tests. If I'm running multiple tests where the number of groups may be two, may be greater than two, I'm going to use personally a one-way ANOVA. If you only have two groups to compare, a two sample t-test and one-way ANOVA will give you the same results. However, when you have more than two groups, you should use ANOVA uh, because performing multiple t-tests increases the risk of a type one error incorrectly rejecting the null hypothesis. Right. And what I'm driving at here is that if I run t-tests after t-tests after t-tests after t-tests, the chances are that I've never made a type one error anywhere is going to decrease. So my risk of making one or more type one errors increases the more tests I do. One thing that we use ANOVA for is to try and do like a catch all test to try and run as few tests as possible. So that way I, I expose myself to type one errors less. In both cases, the p-value is used to make a decision about the null hypothesis. If the p-value is less than the significance level, then the null hypothesis is rejected and is concluded that there is a significant difference between the group means. All right, now ANOVA has some assumptions. So the assumptions of one-way ANOVA. One-way analysis of variance is a parametric test that makes several assumptions about the data. And here are the assumptions. Uh, independence, normality, and the homogeneity of variances. Okay. Independence, the observations are assumed to be randomly and independently drawn from the population. This often means that the data should be collected from a randomized controlled experiment. Normality, the responses for each group are normally distributed. So that's when I look at individual groups where we make the assumption that they are normally distributed. This does not necessarily mean that the combined distribution of all groups is normal. This assumption can be checked using various normality tests such as Sapiro-Wilkes test or graphically through QQ plots. Homogeneity of variances. The variances of the populations from which the different groups are drawn were drawn from are all equal, often referred to as homoscedasty. We can use uh, Levine's test or Bartlett's test uh, can be used to check this assumption.
if these assumptions are not met, the results from a one-way ANOVA might not be the right conclusions. And we would know how, we have, have no way of knowing it when I look at it. So if one of these assumptions are not valid, then we want to use something else. Typically, we're going to use a non-parametric equivalent like the Kruskal-Wallis test. It's worth noting that ANOVA is fairly robust to violations of normality and homogeneity of variances when group sizes are equal or nearly equal. However, for drastically unequal group sizes, these assumptions are even more important. All right, so now let's take a look at an ANOVA table. All right, so when I tell R, SAS, Python, whatever I'm using to run ANOVA for me, it's going to spit out an ANOVA table. And the, there may be a little bit change in the presentation, but it's going to be you know, fundamentally the same over and over and over. And the ANOVA table gives us a way of interpreting what's going on. So my columns are going to be the source of variation, degrees of freedom, sum of squares, mean squares, and then the F statistic. And typically, you'll find a p-value to the right in another column. All right, so the rows, my first row is going to be my between groups, then my within groups, and then the total. Typically, when you see variations on the table, degrees of freedom will be to the right of sum of squares over here. So uh, be ready for that when you look. All right, so what's going on when I look at within groups variation? I'm looking at... So I, I take the first group, I look at the variance about the group average within that group. And then I look at the next group, I look at the variance or the, var the deviation from the group average, square it, add it all up. I take the sum of squares difference between observations and the group average, square it, add them all up. And that's called my sum of squares within. So my within aspect is when I look at a group, what is the deviation from average within each of those groups? And you know, after I do the difference, I square it, I add things up. Now between groups, this is the variability between group averages and the overall sample averages. That is my between groups. So for each group, I'm using the subgroup average represent the group entirely, and I look at that the group average difference from the overall sample to average, where I don't consider subgroups. And that is going to be my sum of squares between, is where I'm going to get that. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to take my, take like the average, like, why, why, look at this, I, I'm, I'm wording it, this is not 100% correct, Classically trained statisticians will scream at me as I say this, but what we're going to do, we're going to take the average of the sum of squares by dividing by the degrees of freedom. It's not technically an average, it's close, it's approximately a, a measurement of variance. All right, so here I take a, my sum of squares between, I divide by my degrees of freedom, so this looks a lot like an average on the sum of squares, and that gives me that my mean squares between, okay? Now, I'm going to take my sum of squares within, divide by degrees of freedom, and that's going to be give me my mean squares within. All right, you see that I've got division going on here. I've got division going on here. Okay, so I'm dividing by the number of groups minus one. I'm dividing by the number of observations minus the number of groups. Right, that's important. Now, What's going to happen next? This is a measurement of variance. This is a measurement of variance. If you remember from the F, the F hypothesis test, the F test checks to see if two populations have the same variance. So what we're going to do is we're going to check and see do these two two measurements of variance, are they equal to each other? Okay, now we've set up this way, and I'm gonna get an F statistic. 
And if this is very, very large proportionately to this, we're going to get a large F value. A large F value is an indication that these two have different variances. All right, well, if we have different variances, what that means is that there is more variability between the groups than within the groups. Large F value means that the variance between groups is much bigger than the variance within groups, which means that if I look at the groups, it's like I have a cluster of values over here. I have a cluster of values over here. And this cluster here is tighter together than the clusters overall are with each other. And so what that does is that shows us that we have a difference in variability. So what we're saying, what our conclusion is that each of the, in, somewhere, individual groups are tighter together than the groups are tight with each other. Okay, so that's how we reach a conclusion. So there's uh, several things that we have to talk about. When I look at my overall total sample variance, my total variance is gonna end up being, or my total sum of squares, my total sum of squares here is actually equal to my sum of squares between plus my sum of squares within. All right, so in, in a sense, what we're doing is I'm taking the entire variability of my data sets and I'm breaking the variability into two parts. I have the within group variability and I have the between groups variability and that accounts for the total variability in the entire system. All right, so our source of variation, this column specifies whether the variance, variation is between groups or within groups or total. Our degrees of freedom, this represents the number of independent pieces of information that can go into the calculations of an estimate. For between groups, there are K minus one degrees of freedom, K is the number of groups. Within groups, we have sample size minus number of groups for degrees of freedom. For sum of squares, this column represents the total variability of the data. We have between groups, sum of squares, and within groups, sum of squares between groups, is the variability be between the group means and the overall means, while the within groups is the variability within a subgroup. And then we have the mean squares aspect. These are the average variability calculated by dividing the sum of squares by the degrees of freedom in that row. Then we get our F statistic. This is a measure of how much the means of each group differ from each other compared to the variability within each group. It's a ratio of variances. It is calculated divided by, by dividing between groups mean squares by the within group mean squares. And then, from the F statistic, using the two degrees of freedom I have, I get my p-value. The primary goal of one-way ANOVA is to test if there is a significant difference between the group means, which is determined by the F statistic and the associated p-value. If the p-value is less than the significance level, then the null hypothesis of equal means is rejected in favor of the alternative hypothesis that somewhere there is some difference among our groups. All right, so let's talk about types of variation in a little bit more detail. Remember that we've got between group variations, within group variations, and the total variations. So the between group variation, this represents the variability between groups means, so the the difference between group averages and the overall average in the data. So this quantifies the extent to which the group means differ from each other. So this you know, takes into account how different are the subgroup averages. If the group means are very different, the between group variation will be high. And here's the formula for sum of squares between right here. K is the number of groups, 
and m sub i is the number of observations in that group, while x bar sub i is the mean of the ith group, while x bar is the overall average of our data. Now, our within group variation, this represents the variability within each group. So when I look at an individual group, how much variability is there, but then I take the sum of squares and I add up each group's sum of squares to get the overall aspect. If the individual observations within each group are very different from the group means, the within group variation will be high. The sum of squares within group is calculated using this formula. So I take each individual observation, I subtract its group average, square it, add them all up. So this is I, so this is the sum of square deviation within a group, and then I add up that sum of squares for each of the groups. Here you'll notice that I take an average, subtract off the over. So this is a group average, subtract off the overall average, multiply it, and then I put a weight on the number of observations I have. Now the total variation. This represents the total variability in my data. It is the sum of the between group variation and the within group variation. We, the total uh, sum of squares is calculated using this formula. And here, I just take my observation minus the overall average, square it, then add them all up. And our sum of squares total is equal to my sum of squares between plus my sum of squares within. In ANOVA, the F statistic is calculated by dividing the between group mean variation by the within group variation and the resulting p-value in, in the F test can be used to determine whether the group means are significantly different from each other. The p-value in a one-way ANOVA is calculated using the F distribution. The F statistic calculated in the ANOVA is the ratio of the mean squared uh, between groups mean squares between to the mean squares within. Conceptually, the ratios represent the variance explained by group differences compared to the variance that's due to differences within the groups. And so here's that ratio. So this is the variation of, of group averages from the overall average. Here's the variation within each of the groups cumulatively. Take the ratio, that's my F statistic. So this will follow the F distribution. And I use the degrees of freedom to specify which specific form of F distribution I use. So to calculate the p-value, we use the cumulative distribution function of the F distribution. So if I have a large F value, that is evidence that of at least two of the means are different from each other. The p-value is the probability of obtaining a value that is extreme as the F statistic or more, assuming that the null hypothesis is true. Since the F distribution is continuous, this is equivalent to calculating the area under the curve of the F distribution from the F statistic to infinity. So I'm looking to the right of the F value when I do my p-value calculation. Because ANOVA is typically a right-tailed test, almost always, there, there are weird situations, but we're not dealing with that in this class. The p-value is going to be equal to one minus the cumulative distribution function. If the p-value is less than the significance level, then the null hypothesis, that is, all group means are equal, this null hypothesis is rejected in favor of the alternative, that is to say, at least one group is different from another. All right, so now let's go ahead and run an example with R. So let's go ahead and say I've got three groups, and I want to run you know, a NOVA hypothesis test. I'm going to use random number generation, 
to show how we would con conduct this. All right, so here, remember that I need to have constant variance when I run ANOVA. That's one of my assumptions. We like to have, ideally, we would have equal sample size in each subgroup. And we're trying to tell, is there a difference between the averages within each group? So we know, because I generated the data, we know that there, in fact, there is a difference between these subgroups. We know that you know all three group subgroups are different from each other. The one, the two that will be easiest to detect because we have constant variance, the two that will be easiest to, de to detect is going to be the difference between group one and group two because there's a you know that, those two have the the biggest population difference. All right, so here I'm generating the data. I'm putting it all into a data frame so it's nice and neat. And so here we can just see what do we have for our data. Now, I'm going to conduct an analysis, a uh, one-way ANOVA, analysis of variance, use the AOV function. So I'm taking my data frame. I use the formula values depends on the group, and I specify my data set that's in here. And here I get my results. So you'll see that I have the groups. I have the residuals. I have two groups in minus uh, uh, in minus two plus, or yeah, in, in minus two uh, minus one. Here's my sum of squares. Here's the mean squares, mean squares. Here's the ratio of these two, just doing division. And here is the p-value. So that is small. So I would conclude that there is a statistical difference between at least two of the groups. Now, in real life, I'm not going to know which groups are different. I have to take this next step to look at the data and dig into it. And then I'll be using a t-test to do that, along with you know probably box plots more than likely, maybe bar plots. Also, remember to check the assumptions of normality, that is, we have independence, normally distributed subgroups, and homogeneity of variances. In our example, we have all three of those, that, because I know that's true because I used a random number generation to do it. In real life, we have to double check it. I have I, independence, that, that comes from study design. We have to you know, do our best to get that one. Normality, we, will, we can do Shapiro-Wilkes to check it. We can... Um, Use QQ plots, homogeneity of variances. We can use um, uh, Bartlett's test and Levine's test on this one. Also, you know, for checking these, you know, we can use histograms and we can use uh, box plots to visually check these things also. And so I want to double check to make sure ANOVA makes sense before I run my hypothesis testing. All right, so in conclusion, one-way analysis of variance is a powerful statistical test used to compare the means of three or more independent groups. It tests the null hypothesis that all groups are equal against the alternative hypothesis that at least one group is different from one other. The test works by partitioning the total variation in the data into two parts, the variance between groups and the variance within groups. The resulting F statistic, which is the ratio of between group variation to the within group variation, is then compared to the F distribution to determine the P value. If the P value is less than a predetermined significance level, typically 0.05, the hypothesis, the null hypothesis is rejected in favor of the alternative hypothesis. However, the one way ANOVA makes several assumptions, including independence between observations normally distributed within each subgroup and homogeneity of the variances within each subgroup. Violations of these assumptions can lead to incorrect conclusions. In summary, the one-way ANOVA is an essential tool in the statistical tool test uh, toolkit for comparing means of multiple groups. However, like all statistical methods, its correct applications requires a good understanding of its underlying principles and assumptions. All right, well, that's all I've got for you. Life is short, do math.